Hi guys. How's it going? Let me just get adjusted. There we are. <sighs> welcome back to It's Pretty by Lori. My name is Lori. And for those of you who are new, welcome. And the, for those of you who have returned, thank you so much for subscribing and liking my content. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I would love that. And if you press the um, bell, it'll kind of give you notifications of when I upload videos. So this episode, I'm going to show you my BoxyCharm um, subscription from March 2020. And um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the subscription came, I got like, I think it was a Saturday evening, so Sunday morning, I saw it on the, on the front doorstep, so I had to get on as fast as possible to show you what I got. Um, this is what came inside it. This is the little insert that has all the descriptions to the products. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically read it off to you and then show you the product as we go along. Okay, so the first product that I received is it's from Murad. It's the Hydro Dynamic Ultimate Moisture for your eyes. It goes for seventy dollars, which I mean it's incredible. Um, that I paid. I think I paid seventy dollars for the last three subscriptions of Boxy Charm. So I mean it's just insane. Like I've gotten my money's worth already in this box, and I've had it. I've already gotten the value of all of my boxy charms, probably in the first boxy charm. So, um, here is the pot. It is huge. It will last me forever. So, I mean, super excited about that. Let me, I've used it a couple times already. So, since Saturday, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I've used it three times. And you can really feel when you're dabbing it on and you kind of just like let it sit for a little bit, I put it through here and right through here. You can really tell the um, it working. You can feel the, not necessarily the tightness, but you feel something kind of activating underneath your um, eyelids, and I guess your under eyes. So that's exciting. So that's the first thing that I got was this beautiful little pot of Murad. Um, Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture for your eyes. All right, the second item that is in this subscription is the KVD Vegan Beauty, the Signature Brow Precision Pencil. So KVD is Kat Von D. She is a beautiful lady um, who lives in more of like the 1950s style and she has a beautiful like thin eyebrow kind of look that is, you know, current with that style. So she's got a nice makeup line and this is her signature brow precision pencil. Um, I recently dyed my hair to more of a copper tone. So I'm, I did try using it once or twice with the chestnut color that I've been using and it's actually really quite nice. Um, this is a pretty, I think it's a nice blonde color, so when my hair goes back to its natural tone, it'll be perfect for my eyebrows. It comes with like a, an adjustable pencil, and then on the other side it has a spoolie so to like blend. So I'll go ahead and use these um, as I do my makeup in the second part of this reveal, so if you want to stay tuned for that, go ahead. Um, so let me read the description. So the, the price of that pencil is $21. And it says, like a signature, your brows are uniquely personal. Signature brow precision pencil allows you to create your dream brow shape with unprecedented control, which is really helpful. Um, a super precision elliptical tip um, is perfect for drawing hair-like strokes with an artist's precision. So that's that's that. Or the third item that I received is the Hank and Henry Living in Color palette. So eyeshadow palette. Let me show you that. Living in Color. Here's the box. It's a cute box. Nice and colorful. And it is cruelty free, vegan. Everything is recycled. 
here's the most beautiful colors I, I think I think it's so fun to get eyeshadow palettes in these subscription boxes because sometimes they're not colors that you would typically choose for yourself so it kind of helps you kind of step outside your comfort zone so I'm looking forward to using some of that I'm wearing my my fuchsia purple kind of sweatshirt today so maybe we'll make that part of the look and then let me read what the description says it says are you ready to start living in color visually inspired by the 90s i'm a product of the 90s and early 2000 myspace realness which i can totally speak to that each one of these eyeshadows can be worn by itself and blended out for the artist on the go. Fun, huh? All right, the next color or the next item that we have is from Becca. I was really excited to get something from Becca because I never tried a Becca product and so I was hoping for something. This is the Glow Gloss. It is, let me take it out of the box. It is a lip gloss called champagne cream which will be nice because it looks more neutral so it'll be great to do a nice fun eye color um, with the living in color and then have this nice neutral lip gloss to kind of tone down the rest of the look i like the component and how it's clear and then let's see what it looks like on nice gold glossy look I mean it's fun easy and it kind of has a nice almost like a ting not a tingle but it has there's something there that's it's creating a an interesting feel let's see what the description says maybe there's a, a point to that eliminating illuminate your lips with a lux conditioning lip color that combines the shine of a gloss and the nourishing benefits of a balm. So there's the balm, the 3D light reflecting pigment ingredients instantly make your lips look fuller and smoother. Are they fuller and smoother? Mm, fun, huh? I'm excited about that. And it doesn't have like fragrance to it. It's, it, it, it seems like it's more natural which is always good. And then last but not least, I've already opened this particular item just because um, I opened it and I was like, oh, I've got to try that. This is the box that my um, spun gel wash, a body wash infused buffer came in. So um, it's like a flower shaped sponge that has soap loaded into it already. And you just kind of like put it and run it underwater and get the bubbles to effervesce and then you scrub it all over your body and then you squeeze it out and you leave it in your shower and it says that you can use it up to 15 plus washes so it it's um a continual use kind of sponge let me read it to you the sponge gel unique body wash infused buffers change instantly underwater as you squeeze from a sensual exfoliating massage texture to a soft as silk to as soft as silk our patent technology provides a uh, a guaranteed number of 14 plus washes and that is that goes for a value of $16 so it was pretty pretty interesting to get that because you know you always want to try something that's going to exfoliate your skin you're always you know having to combat the the bumps on the back of your arm so it's it's and we'll see how that works out and so with that that is my boxy charm reveal so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just play with makeup and let you come along for the ride okay let's get started first things first you want to start with clean brushes so what i'm going to do is off camera go ahead and clean my brushes but first before i do that i'm going to show you what i like to use I'm still using, if you've been following me for a little while, I'm still using um, Refresh. It's the Daily Clean, Daily Brush Cleaner from Sephora. And you just spray it onto a rag, you wipe your brush onto the rag, and it cleans the brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with a couple of the brushes I wanna use, and then we'll get started with the makeup application. Okay, I'll be back. 
Okay, so we're back. Um, I have a better habit of looking to the left or my left. So I flipped the camera. We're using my iPhone for those who are interested. This is just my iPhone with an inexpensive tripod that has a ring light and I've got some, I've got my bedroom window right behind me so I've got natural lighting come in. Just for those who are wondering. Um, to get started, I am going to use some of my uh, face primer, my makeup primer. It's the Perfect 10 from Amani. Um, and I'm just going to pump it into my hand. Right about that much. I'm going to wipe it all over my face. And then I have a second primer that I like to use as well in certain areas. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you what that is in just a second. And then as I'm doing... As I let my primer kind of settle in, I'm gonna do my eye makeup first. I usually do my face makeup first, but today I'm gonna to switch it up a little bit. And because there might be some fallout from some of the makeup that I'm gonna be using, I don't want it to get, I don't want to have to start over with everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this primer. It's from Urban Decay. It's their Optical Illusion Primer. I'm gonna use it kind of right through here in areas that are just a little bit more textured. I'm going to pump it into my hand like so, and then pick it up with my finger and put it where I want it. So right through here, there's a lot of texture on my temple area. And then right on my chin, right through here. Everywhere else it's fine, but where there's a little bit more texture, I'm just going to pop it on there. And then because I'm gonna start with my eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and prime with Urban Decay's um, eyeshadow primer potion with the anti-aging formula. I pull it out of the tube and I kind of squeeze the tube and then wipe it onto the back of my hand. And then I'll use my finger to put it onto the eyelid like so. Kind of, you want to use your ring finger on your eyes. I was always skeptical about these kind of tips when I was growing up, but don't be skeptical, just do it. Your ring finger is not as strong as, say, your middle finger or your pointer finger, so when you're dabbing it onto your eyes, which the skin on your eyes and your under eyes are more delicate, so when you're using your pinky finger, you're not being as aggressive. And when I'm done using my primer um, to kind of create a really good base for my eyeshadow look. I like to use either a translucent powder or a kind of eyeshadow or something that is more closer to my skin tone to just kind of create a really um, even surface to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brush here from Vera and it is number 32 or 35e and it's just a nice really diffused brush i'm going to take this it's called hd powder from elf and it is in the color soft illuminance i think it's their medium color and i'm just going to pick up some of the powder from that and that's going to be kind of my eyeshadow uh, setting powder I'm just going to let it kind of all run over the lid from eyebrow to lash and even below the lash. Just pick it up and do the same on the other side. And the reason I'm doing this is because, like I said, it kind of gives this the eye, an, the eye lid a smoother surface to blend the eye shadow look out. If you don't do this and you put your eye primer on or you put um, some sort of tacky foundation on, not tacky as like that's so tacky, but like tacky that's like sticky. When you pick up a pigment that's not that setting powder, it's not going to blend nicely. It's going to stick to that one spot and it's going to take a lot for, for you to move it around. Okay, so we've got the Living in Color palette and we've got some pretty, we've got some more pigmented colors. We've got blues, we've got purples, we've got earth tones. I think because I have the purple, I want, I have my purple sweatshirt on. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm definitely gonna use this tone. I'm not quite sure what the tone looks like, so let's swatch it onto my hand first. 
And here's my hand in this color. Okay, so it's like a very, it's very similar. It's, it's definitely got purple flecks in it, but it's definitely more warm versus cool. So it's more of like a reddish. And grab a little bit more and see if I layer it, what will happen. Yeah, see, it's definitely got the pearl, but it also has a, or not pearl, it definitely has a purple tone to it, like a purple glittery fleck, but it's not straight up purple, which is fine. I just want to see what it's going to look like before we put it onto our, our, our actual eye. Um, and then I think what we're going to use is, I'm going to see the difference. There's two colors. I want to see what this and this color look like on my hand as well. So this color is called Sultry Sin. This color is called Drag. Here, you can read it. It's these colors. I can't see, the font is, is too unclear for me, but those are the colors I think I want to try. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch the color on the bottom right here. Let's see what that looks like. It's like a terracotta almost. I would call it terracotta. Somebody's drag racing behind my house. They're, they're done being uh, socially distant, if you will. Um, super pretty color though. I think that's really pretty. I think that's going to be my base color. And then we have this brown color right in the middle. Let's see what that is. It's a little bit cooler. I'm going to see how that pays off. Oh, look at that. The pigment on that is beautiful. Okay, okay. Let's get the party started. Um, before I use these colors, I want to create like a contour on my eyelid. I feel like it gives me a better look with my application. So to do that, I'm going to use a color from my Trip for Two Wander Palette. And this is actually a bronze and a, and a blush palette. This is the color I'm going to use. So you can see how it's a little bit more of an, uh, a cooler tone. It has more um, earthiness to it. And I think that'll help me to create, because I have pretty full lids, um, or hooded lids, so it's going to kind of stretch things out. I'm just going to take this brush and brush from Elizabeth Mott, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of flatten out that lid a little bit using this and this is just kind of contour thing so i'm taking the pigment and instead of going i'm going to end up bringing it over here too but i start here just so i can create that crease i'm creating the crease using this part of my nose and then i'm going to bring it out and I just kind of windshield wipe it out. Now what this is going to do is this is going to create a contour for the eyeshadow. So when the eyeshadow is um, applied, it looks more natural. I like a more natural eyeshadow. Even if you're using fun colors, you can keep it natural looking. Sometimes I'll do my um, eyebrows before, sometimes I'll do them after. I think today we'll just focus on the eyeshadow look and then do the eyebrows afterwards. Let's put some of that pigment right through here. So for, for those who do have fitted eyes, this is the technique I'm using. Like I said, I put some of the color in here to kind of enforce that new crease. So you're creating a new crease. And then I pull it out and you'll notice that you're pulling it out above the crease that you already have. So if you, to do that, you just kind of look straight ahead or looking at the mirror or the, and you apply the shadow above the crease. If I were to go in and apply it in my crease, you wouldn't see it because once I open my eyes, there's, it's being covered up. So I'm creating a new crease. So this is the crease I'm going to work with when I use other pigments, if that makes sense. So the next color that I want to use is I'm definitely going to pick up this color right here and just kind of just ever so gently kind of create um, kind of like a just a smoky eye um, and then pick up as, you know, as we get a little bit more intense, maybe I'll go a little bit tighter with this. We're just going to do it. 
So I'm again using this blending brush and I'm just dabbing it in, tapping it off. And then I'm gonna put the brush, I'm gonna start kind of like right on the outside of my pupil. So if you're looking kind of at yourself, I'm gonna put it right there so it doesn't go too far out. And I'm gonna make a, a spiral and then I'm gonna spiral it out. And then in the process, I'm gonna do kind of like a sideways V. So I'm spiral and then make the V. See how much pigment that, that shadow picks up? And so because I have that, because I created a new crease using that contour, it's easier to see it with the pigment. So I'm using that, that crease for my pigment instead of going into here and doing it because you won't be able to see it. So I'm going to start here and then kind of create that sideways V. Always tap your pigment off. You'll find that you'll have more control over the situation if you work with less. So pretty. So pretty. So I'm going to put this brush down and I'm going to focus on underneath my eye. I'm going to pick up a brush that's a lot more condensed and use that for the application because, I mean, I can clean up my mess, but I want to keep it pretty organized so I can save time. So I'm picking up the same color, dabbing it off, and then I'm going to put it right here. So it completes the look. You want to complete the look. You don't want to have, you, you don't want to start it on the top lid and then not bring it to the bottom lid because it makes the look incomplete. So pretty, so very pretty. Okay, now back to this brush. Now I'm gonna go back in with this pigment, tap it off and just keep it on the outer sides of my lid. So if you want to use your mirror, you can. I also recommend taking the compact and bringing it closer to you so you're not having to focus. You can just kind of do. And I'm just putting the product right here. Instead of bringing it in, I'm, bringing, I'm, I'm slowly, just gradually bringing the colors outward. What do you think? Pretty, huh? Yes, there we go. What do you think? Pretty, huh? It's nice and like fire-like, which is neat. Um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that purple, which I think will grab a little bit more attention to the eye as well. I've got a, a lot of attention on my eye, so don't worry. I know there's a lot going on, but that's fun. It's the fun part about doing makeup. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try something first using the brush, the same brush I've been using. I'm gonna see how the glitter lays down on my lid. So it's a good practice to have to just experiment, you know? If something doesn't work one way, then you can always figure out another way. So I'm gonna pick up the purpley glittery color right here. And again, I think it's called Sultry Sin. And I'm gonna even like more concentrated in that corner. Let's see, is anything happening? Yes, yeah, something is happening when I do that. You may not be able to see it, but I can. So I'm gonna stop right there, kind of zoom in so you can see it. I'm gonna 
you see it up here. I'm still using those V-shaped, sideways V-shaped strokes and spinning the brush all at the same time because it buffers things in. Pretty, super pretty. It's almost like I'm tucking the color into my lid instead of just, you know, wiping it on and pushing it into my lid. So far, so good, huh? All right, so I'm done with that. I'm gonna go ahead and focus more on my eyebrow at this point. I'm gonna use the eyebrow pencil that I from the from the Boxy Charm subscription. I might add a little bit more of a chestnut color just because my eye or my hair is a different pigment than normal. If this is too ashy, you don't want it to completely contrast because it's not doesn't show for a good look. So let's see what happens. Use a compact, it's closer to you. You don't have to focus on anything. Your, um... So it doesn't look like this brush is too ashy, but it might be a little too light. I don't know, it's actually not bad. I might do a little bit more once I have actual face makeup on just to kind of complete the look. But I like the control I have. It does say that you can get more control, and I definitely feel like I have more control over the situation. I was getting a consultation for the eyebrow pencil that I'm currently using, the girl, she was very helpful in, in, in directing me on how I should actually apply the pencil, because I don't normally use pencils like this. I use either brow gel or I'll use like a pencil, like a wooden pencil. And so she is telling me just to kind of take the tip of this adjustable pencil and focus mainly on where the hair is more denser first and then feather out where it's more sparse and kind of just fill in where you see the need to fill in. Instead of going in and drawing a full on line, you focus on this area first and the balance of the two sides and then you go out sometimes like she did say like if you wanted to create making sure that this part was even you can create that line there but more more so than anything you just want to continue to brush through where the hair is more dense and then feather out on the ends you want to start where it's dense and then at the front and the back of the brow, you create more of like a hair strand versus a line. And then you use your spoolie to either smooth out the look or just to brush out your brow, which I like to do. So there's the eyebrows. Turns out that the color, I think, works really well. Here we go. Beautiful. All right, so next things next. We have, we've used this, we've used that, and I used the eye cream already when I was doing my skincare this morning. And then the body scrubber, I used that in the shower. You are not welcome there. Sorry, I love you with all my heart and soul, but that's not gonna happen. And then the last thing was the Becca lip gloss, which I already have on. I'm gonna reapply some more just so you can see it go on and see the component again. So here it is. This is in champagne cream. And see, I love that clear wand. I think that's so cool. And then. smooth th smooths things out 
hydrates, moisturizes, drinks up, fortifies, whatever you want to call it. Kind of adds some poofiness to, or like a, not poofiness, what does it say? 3D effect plumping. I like the plumping, the subtle plumping. All right, so from here on out is the rest of my, my, my makeup application. It's not strictly to a BoxyCharm subscription. It might, some of the stuff might be from previous ones and some of it just might be stuff I'm trying and um, products that I've used for a while. So without further ado, let's continue with that. So this is called uh, Futurist something or other from Estee Lauder. It's in the color uh, 2C3 Fresco. It's a product I'm just trying out. I had consulted for um, their double wear and it just didn't work out. So this is their next best thing. It's new so they don't have as many pigments but they've matched my color pretty well. So far I like it. So I'm just picking it up. I have it in a sample so if you ever want to try something, always try to get a sample first and kind of test drive it first before buying the whole container. And plus I had just purchased another makeup that I'm currently using and I really like using so I don't really need another foundation but I was interested and curious to see how it worked. So she said to kind of dab it onto my face and use my hands to wipe it in but I don't want to do that. I am going to use my brush. This is um, the Power Powder Brush from Mascara Beauty. I like it because it has kind of a kabuki style application. I'm just gonna brush it in like so. And this is where you can clean up any of the um, fallout that you got from your eyeshadow application. And you just kind of wipe it away with your foundation. Just buff it in and it has this has a nice um, illuminating quality to it which I like because I have my freckly skin and I think an illuminating product helps to um, allow for a smoother finish especially when you have freckles if you have freckles and you're trying to cover them up if you don't use the right products it ends up making your skin look dry or flaky or dull and I think it's better to use something more illuminating because the pigment of your freckle is different than the pigment of your skin so it's more transparent when using something that's more illuminating. So now I'm going to go ahead and conceal some things under my eyes. I use concealer more than anything, I use it kind of as a highlighter in a way. This one is from Doll 10. It's their TCE concealer. I like this because it has a lot of light to it, a lot of pigment to it, so I'm using it kind of as a highlighter. It also has this surgical steel kind of tip, so when you're applying it, it's nice and cooling, so it kind of takes away some of the puffiness. And Dalton has a lot of skin care quality in it as well. So you've got a lot of anti-aging ingredients that you can use for under your eyes. And then like I said, I use it for highlighting. So I use it down in the middle of my nose, kind of through here to kind of allow for my cheekbones to really come through when I do my contour. So I'm gonna pop that on using the, the, the applicator. I just kind of allow a little bit to come out. I don't apply too much. And then I do that as I release on squeezing out the product. Take a little bit more, squeeze it onto the component, and kind of let it onto my nose and like release as I put it onto my nose. Put it through here. It has a great smell to it too. It's just nice and fresh. I also take it down here. So I'm highlighting the middle of my face. I'm also taking it here so when I go to contour under my cheekbones, it really comes out. You do want to use a sponge that is damp because the product is water activated. So I'm going to go ahead and wet my sponge. I've dampened my sponge. It's in my rag. I'm just letting it wringing out a little bit. And I'm going to use the tip of this 
Perfector sponge, also from Mascara Beauty, to kind of blend it in. So you see how my I'm not messing with my actual eyeshadow application. I'm just using the concealer to conceal and brighten and also kind of clean up anything underneath. So I leave the spots that I want to see more highlight on, I leave them where they're out for a little bit before I blend them in and then I address them after. So I can even leave that line even longer if I wanted to. That idea, that concept is called baking and what it's doing is it's kind of solidifying in that spot for you. And then, or up and down the center of my nose. Don't worry if it spreads out through, over your nose because you're going to go in and contour afterwards. I'm going to contour with um, a product from Mascara Beauty as well. So I'm using the, the Detail Hack Brush from Mascara Beauty to apply the contour. The contour I'm, I'm using currently is called Stone, I'm sorry, it's called Ash. As you can tell, it's a little bit more of a cooler tone. I was using this, but I went from a blonde to kind of more of a chestnut color with my hair, so I wanted something that was more uh, complimentary, so I'm using more of the ash tone, and I'm taking this side of the brush, and I'm just gonna kind of sketch down the side of my nose to kind of bring out the natural edge. I'm not creating a new line, I'm just using the natural edge of my nose to create that uh, definition. If you want to create a smaller nose, then you bring the pigment in closer. If you want to create a bigger nose, then you bring it more down the sides of your nose. And then I'm just going to leave that there for now and pick up the same color using the bigger side. I'm going to kind of pet into the actual compact and I'm going to take the, con the contour and just let it diffuse itself into my cheekbone area right underneath my cheekbone. I'll blend it a, a little bit more in a minute. I'm just going to grab a little bit more over and put some more on this side and like I said kind of just blend it in to a point. You don't want to completely blend it in because if you completely blend it in you're going to lose the effect of a contour. The contour is to kind of bring out and chisel certain areas on your face. I take it in the middle of my forehead, creating kind of like a heart shape effect to bring out my eyes. And then I bring it down right through here to kind of eliminate, eliminate some of that poofiness on my neck. Shadows are going to reduce appearances of things that you don't want to see or create the chisel that you want to see and then the highlight is going to like stretch and tighten, if you will. Alright, I'm going to go back to the sponge that I used for my concealer and I'm just going to start blending it all together, like so. And just bounce. Bounce on the skin. You don't want to wipe because you're not wanting to transfer something from one spot to the other. You're wanting to blend it in and pick up the pigment that you don't need to use. I'm just blending, blending, blending. The brush I'm going to use for my bron bronzer is also from Mascara Beauty. And the bronzer that I'm going to use is also from Mascara Beauty. It's a cream bronzer. I haven't used it in half a second, so I kind of miss it. So I'm going to use it today and show you guys what it looks like. All the tins that you can get from Mascara Beauty are magnetic, so they pop in and out of different compacts. So I just pulled this one out of my Artist 
palette. This is called Bella. It's the Bella Bronzer, and I'm going to just pop it into the compact like so, and it's magnetic. So you have a customizable compact, and I'm just picking up the bronzer, and you just pop it onto the high points of your cheeks. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to use a pigment for my blush because I want my bronzer to be nice and natural looking. I want it to look like I have color, not that I'm adding color to my face, if that makes sense. So I put the blush on after. Sometimes I'll do bronzer, blush, and then bronzer again, depending on if it's been sunny out and how much I want to create. I'm going to take some and kind of blend it in with the, the contour that I've applied to my nose. And then there's the bronzer. Something I'm going to use for for my blush is, is also from the compact that I use to contour my eyes. Um, it is a bronzer and blush set. I use this to contour my eyes, which is very similar to the Bella bronzer, um, but I want to use this as my blush. The brush that I'm going to use to do that is this is called the brightening brush from Olimar brushes and the reason I'm going to use that is because I just want a delicate kind of a, a sweet kiss of pigment of this pigment on my cheek I don't want it to be overwhelming I want it to be nice and pretty so I'm using a smaller brush that can allow me to control my application and just kind of tap it right there really high points of my cheek so it's just like a nice sweet application of the blush and then I'm gonna turn the brush around to the other side and grab my illuminator which is also is also from a BoxyCharm subscription this is the Too Faced Too Faced Fancy Pink Diamond and it's kind of like a rose gold kind of Color. It's got the pink and the golds in, golds in it. I'm going to take my brush and just kind of pop that illuminator right in kind of like a V shape, sideways V again, right there. Do the same over here. So kind of mute some of that again, blush. I want it to be a pretty, like, delicate blush color. Pop some right here. Before we s am I done? You know, I'm all I always get to the end of the videos and I'm like, ah, I forgot to do this. I want to make sure I have all the things. So let's look at everything really quickly. I'm going to take a real quick picture. And um, let's check everything out. I think I want to put a little bit more of that purple glitter on my eyelid. I really am enjoying it and I want just a little bit more for just for luck. I'm just going to tuck it into my eyes. Now that I have my foundation on, I'm going to kind of go back and reestablish some of the pigment that might have blocked, wiped away as I was doing the rest of my makeup. So now you can see kind of how the purple is being, it's kind of center stage, but I didn't just apply the purple. I applied other colors around it to make it to help support, they're kind of like supporting characters in a movie, but the purple is the star.